welcome back to my channel. It's Emma. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am so happy to be bringing this video to you. I feel like we all needed it and judging by the request that I got, you guys really, really needed something like this. These, this is another one of my very specific, weird book request videos where I ask you to send in all of your very, very, very specific to the T requests for specific books that you are looking for to fit exactly what you need right now. And then I try to match you with the best book. So welcome to the library. I hope you're having an okay day. The other thing that I wanted to say was that whenever I ask you guys for the books that you want to be reading, I get such a flood of requests. It makes me, it makes me incredibly emotional and I just want to say that I feel for you so much because hundreds of you are sending in requests for things that I'm assuming you're likely going through in reality in your life right now. So many of you are asking for the same things and just the kind of requests that I get, I feel like it's such an intimate thing. It speaks to the kind of person you are, what you're going through. I just wanted to read some of these miscellaneously because it just, just makes me so happy and so full of gratitude and just love this community and all of you guys so much. I think it's truly beautiful. Here is what you guys are made of, you lovely pieces of starlight. A book that encompasses the feeling of pure, unfiltered, wholesome love. A book that makes you feel like you're spending a whole day in nature. A book that feels like a warm hug after a long, hard day. A book for a lonely exchange student. A book that feels like reading by the lake at dusk with fireflies and s'mores. A book to read while camping by the sea. A book to read when you miss your home. A book for walking through cherry blossoms on a crisp spring morning. A book for being in your 20s and everything makes zero sense and learning to navigate that feeling. A book to read on the train ride to the first day at university. A book about falling in love with the moon. A book that feels like the sun shining in your face. A book for mending a lonely soul. A book to read while in the mountains. A book that you can turn to when you feel empty and need a hug. Like poetry, it's beautiful, it's so nice. Someone out there in the world with like a fantasy novel with cute little creatures doing cute little things. I feel like I have to recommend Wind in the Willows. I mean, maybe fantasy is stretching it a little tiny bit, but this book is so sweet and it really truly is little animals, little creatures doing cute little things. They're just going around living their life. I feel like a lot of this book has come to embody the tenets of cottagecore. I really truly love Wind in the Willows. It is such a cozy, comforting story and it's just utterly relaxing, except for Toad. Toad's a little bit crazy. They're just going around living their life. It is pure wholesomeness. It's about friendship. It's about nature. And it's so cozy. It's perfect for any season. Wind in the Willows. Cute little creatures doing cute little things. Someone wants a book about cats. I feel like I could make a whole video on this. This is such a weird one, I'm so sorry. This is Tail Chaser Song by Tad Williams. It's about cats <laughs> and they go on a quest to hell to save one of their own. So we follow Tail Chaser, who I think is our orange boy. He's a ginger tomcat of rare courage and curiosity, a born survivor in a world of heroes and villains. And they go all the way to cat hell. Hilarious. I think this is gonna be funny. I found this at a thrift store. I'm excited to read it. That is Tail Chaser's song. Oh, a lot of dust. Someone requested the best winter book. Castle in the Clouds. <laughs> Castle in the Clouds. I was gonna say Ice Fields, but I've talked about Ice Fields to death, so I'm gonna say Castle in the Clouds for this one. Someone wants a book that feels like living in a big city. I have to go grab this. Okay, so I just finished Tram 83. This, to me, because of the style of the novel, more than anything else, really truly reminds me of living in a big city because this book is incredibly overstimulating. Fiston Mwanza Mujila does so many cool things with voice. There's also like a style known as locomotive literature, which the book talks about as well. This is set in a fictional city, presumably in the Congo, but it's incredibly busy, bustling, so many people and so many voices are always coming in and like interrupting the text like one person will start to say something and all this like litany of outside voices will come in interrupt the text take you out of it and you're like oh my god wait this is literally distracting me i'm getting confused i'm getting overstimulated this book feels to me about stepping outside onto the streets of a busy downtown to me feels like because i get very very overstimulated very quickly this book was just loud but it was also so beautiful, it was so musical. And on top of that, it is a book about the city. There are cities which don't need literature. They are literature. City in here, she pulsated with literature. We have a request for a fantasy with zero romance. 
not even a glance. I loved this book when I was younger and I'm really hoping you're going to too. It is The Dark Hills Divide by Patrick Carmen. It is a middle grade fantasy. I'm hoping that's okay. I'm hoping that's okay. If anyone has adult fantasy with not even a lick of romance, please recommend it. But this one, absolutely no romance, like none. There's not even a glance. This one we follow Alexa and she is visiting the town of Bridewell with her father. Every summer they go to the town and this is one of the towns that is bordered by the wall. Bridewell is the town closest to the Dark Hills, this area that is walled off from all of the inhabitants of this fantasy world because it's said to be swarming with criminals, magic, bad, bad things. Um, Alexa is very curious about the world outside the walls and so when she gets out there things start to happen. This like filled my animal loving heart as a kid with so much joy, so much adventure. I think it's really cute, it's really wholesome. I haven't read it in a few years but I have read it since I first found it in like my elementary school library and at least on that reread it held up for me. Next up we have sci-fi that is hard science and set in another planet. Solaris, please, please, thank you. I have not had the opportunity to talk about Solaris by Stanislaw Lem in such a long time. I love this book. This is a five star. This is a five star for me. I'm kind of matching with the cover. This is horrifying. Like this scared the heebie-jeebies out of me. We have Chris Kelvin. He arrives on the planet of Solaris, so it's set on another planet, and this is really really like hard hard sci-fi because there's so many um scientific essays and like scholarly articles inserted into the plot that chris is reading um and so this really breaks up the plot with honestly really cool essays although some of them are a bit hard to get through solaris the planet is a scary place because the scientists that go there there's only like three of them they're extremely isolated but um, he is forced to confront a painful, hitherto unconscious memory embodied in the living physical likeness of a long-dead lover. Scientists speculate that the Solaris Ocean may be a massive brain that creates these incarnate memories. Its purpose in doing so, unknown. Solaris, the planet, is just a massive ocean. So five stars, like I said, I want to reread this so badly. I just, I love this so much, so I really hope you enjoy it too. Somebody requested breakup books, please. This is the Count of Monte Cristo. You know what's better than healing healthily from a breakup? Uh, revenge. Honestly though, I think this is great because number one, this is gonna distract you. It's gonna pull you into the story. This is so entertaining. One of my favorite books of the year so far. So if you need a distraction, this is great. But it also follows Dante's who, yes, goes through a breakup of a sort. More than that, he is breaking up with this life that he's led previously. If you don't know, it's about Dante's who is a wonderful young, optimistic, pure-hearted sailor. People are very jealous of him and so they throw him into jail. He splits from this old life path that he was previously going down. Seriously, spectacularly wonderful, but if you want something probably on the other side of that spectrum, I would recommend The Days of Abandonment by Ferrante. I haven't personally read this one yet. It's on my shelves. This looks like devastating. This is not, this is not going to be the fun ride. Um, Monte Cristo is emotional, but not, I think, as devastating as the days of abandonment. This is about Olga, who is abandoned by her husband, and more than that, she just becomes so shut up in herself and literally shut in because she is trapped inside her apartment during a heat wave, and so she's forced to interact with and confront everything from her past, all of her grief, all of her emotions. Next! like this one a lot. Someone would like a book that is so viscous it could block a damn drain. Martin Chuzzlewit. Oh, I would block a drain with Martin Chuzzlewit. There's really no books in my collection and my bookshelves that I would ever use if I ran out of paper towel or towels or whose pages I would like mop something up with, but you better believe that Martin Chuzzlewit could Okay, it would, not only because of its pages, but the writing, the plot, it's viscous, okay? So viscous that I couldn't get it down, this book defeated me. I DNF'd Martin Chuzzlewit with this man. They're ready to block your drain. Are you seeing that? He's gonna block your drain. You're gonna need to call a plumber. There are some earlier Dickens books, although Martin Chuzzlewit is, I think, precisely the middle novel. If you're looking at like his later works versus his earlier works, this is known as Dickens' American novel because it is, his only book where he explored the United States and it's supposed to be very humorous and fun and witty and I found it 
too boring to finish and that's not something I, I hardly ever do but Martin Chuzzle it like it, it wore me down. This one actually broke my heart. Someone said something for the three little ghost children from Coraline. You're actually gonna break my heart thinking about that. Three little ghost children in Coraline. Um, they're ghosts, right? So they've passed. It's just, it's actually so heartbreaking. Coraline interacts with them a little bit in the film. I forget, I'm pretty sure in the book as well. A family. I want to give them back family because ultimately they're taken from their true family. So I would recommend either Matilda or my neighbor Totoro because in Matilda she is also taken away from her family but she's taken to, she's actually taken to a better family which is what the three little ghost children from Coraline thought was happening because they're so young, they're kids, they're like, oh my gosh, there's this cool fantasy world over here in our house. And then in my neighbor Totoro, again, the kids are taken away to a fantastical world, so it combines that fantasy element. But again, Totoro, the forest spirit, is incredibly mothering and nice and kind and wonderful. Totoro is the other mother we all deserve. Someone would like a book where landscape plays a large role, has beautiful nature descriptions, and a bonus if it's sad. Heaven and hell, and with quite a big bonus, actually. I would like to cash that in. This one, this one, this one. This one. Landscape is the book. Like, landscape is the character, ultimately, and the people in Iceland go through so much grief just trying to survive. It's incredibly poetic, it's incredibly beautiful. This is a trilogy, I just finished the second book. It's not possible to thread the tears together and then let them sink like a glittering rope down into the dark deep and pull up those who died but ought to have lived. Someone requested something about a woman slowly going feral from any kind of societal pressure. I'm gonna recommend Night Bitch. I actually just got in on Libby, so I'm just about to start it, but I've heard such good things about this. This is about a single mother. Well, she's not actually single, but she, she pretty much is because her husband is just away at work all of the time. He only like calls her from numerous hotels. He's always traveling. He never comes home and she's left in the house to care for their two-year-old toddler. I would crumble. And she is slowly losing it because she's not seeing anyone. She's not able to do anything. She is left to deal with the terrible twos alone. But something bizarre starts to happen because at night when her son, I believe, refuses to go to sleep, she starts to notice that she is gaining physical and more than physical traits of a dog. Like her canines start to sharpen, she has a heightened sense of smell, and she starts to crave raw meat. Oh god, someone said it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years since I finished the count of Monte Cristo. I haven't found anything like it. Do you have any ideas? No. <laughs> you and me both. Okay, there's nothing nothing else like it out there. Great Expectations by Dickens. The, it's ruined you. The Count of Monte Cristo ruins people for life. Like, don't read it. Someone would like a book to read while well, in the mountains. Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. Fantastic. I read The Hobbit just before I saw my first mountains ever in my life. It was magical. I just pretend I'm, I'm, I'm walking to Mordor. That is literally all I do. You guys, you guys actually crack me up. You guys are so funny. Um, someone requested Carlos signs his hair coming out of the race car type of male lead in a romance. I have two. Ironically, the two that I'm going to recommend the male leads in here also have great hair. Both of them are also super vain about it and always want to keep up appearances. They're both also smooth operators. First, I'm going to recommend Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies because Wendell in here, first of all, great hair. It's more light academia. The romance isn't the full focus of the plot, but it's honestly beautiful and Wendell is so fun. The other one I want to recommend is actually a book I'm in the middle of right now, and that is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Jax is the love interest, I believe. Also has fantastic hair, and again, he's kind of the same character type as Wendell. Arrogant, full of themselves, but also lovable and charming. Someone would like something cozy with food as a love language, I'm gonna recommend Sweet Bean Paste. And it's definitely not just romantic love. Someone would like a book when they need some juicy gossip. I'm gonna recommend Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. So this is pitched as Mean Girl meets the UK. Gossip Abounding, it is about super toxic relationships. She is a beautiful self-involved and mildly neurotic London socialite. He is Britain's most photographed bad boy who broke her heart. Someone would like a book for when you really, 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 really need to stop being online. These are the ones that did it for me. First, I'm gonna recommend you a book that scared me 
off of wanting to be online it made me want to throw my phone out of the window even more than i already do but that is leave the world behind by rumana lam this is about among other things how we are so dependent on the internet and social media and what happens when we don't have access to those things it'll make you be like oh my god i actually am i actually know nothing when you're plunged uh in this case into a somewhat catastrophic situation or an environmental disaster it's like what can you actually do without your phone that's not really the vibe that you're you're going for the one that just made me want to be like i want to get off the internet i want to leave it forever i want to quit youtube and i want to just go out there and live among the trees forever it is orlando by virginia wolf this is gorgeous this is about the self the selves plural absolutely beautiful i highly recommend it's intensely lyrical um i think you're just gonna get sucked in so hopefully number one will make you stay offline anyway because you'll be so immersed in the novel but then it will give you that inspiration and finally someone with like a gothic small town setting i'm gonna recommend small game hunting at the local coward gun club by megan gale coles this is newfoundland gothic canadian gothic maritime gothic another blizzard is threatening to tear a strip off downtown st john's this is about the trauma of the past. I am so excited to read this. I think it's gonna be so good. I really like I would read every single one of the books that you request honestly if someone wrote a book specifically tailored to that. So if anyone has any other recommendations for these prompts please just leave them in the comments below. I will see you in the next video. Ciao!